Yes. Okay. We're alive. We exist. And because we exist, we can move. I think it's amazing. If we didn't exist, we couldn't move. And this talk is about movement and life. I was raised in a shoe shop, and ever since then, I was, I've been fascinated by how we humans walk and navigate through life, both literally, how we walk, move, and metaphorically, how do we navigate through life? How do we move? And not just physically, also emotionally and mentally. How do we move? And not just as an individual, but also as a group, and as an organization, and as a society. How do we move? And I will focus on moving in a balanced and integrated way, because I think that's where we really have to focus. Okay, walking. When walking, <laughs> we're always going back and forth over a balance point. So the movement is created in the search for balance from the state of non-balance. And we all navigate, navigate differently. You know, some really hold on to their balance point if you have to go to the toilet. <laughs> you don't want any extreme motion movements. And some don't care about the balance point. They're just, okay, it's either that or that. It's nothing in between. I don't care. <laughs> and that's okay when walking. You don't have to focus too much on the balance point. But if we think about the body as a metaphor for life or maybe an organization, what would happen if you moved without a sense of balance? You know, this might be the expression of someone not in balance. Now you can think about one arm, this might be family relationship. This one, your thoughts and feelings, and maybe this leg, work. And the other leg, what you really want to do. All going in different directions. And it's a terrible feeling, actually. And I... I don't see many other people because I have enough with trying to get in balance. Can you imagine this was a company? PR, production, customer, service, sales. And then you should be the head of that company. You know? It's a terrible feeling. I feel so fragmented. And I do feel the need of integrating all these different parts. And how to integrate if you want to move in an integrated way, you need to move with the center as your driving force for motion. And for the physical body, that's the hip. You know, this is the power center. And once all the parts, different parts, relate to one center or relate to what connects them, a totally different flow and feeling occurs. And I can choose my dynamics. I can go slow, contracted. I can expand, be quick, because I have a strong center. And I can choose my direction. Everything moves in the same direction because my power center, my center moves me there. And it creates a totally different vibe, don't you agree? And it feels differently. And imagine if this was a company, and you saw this vibe, you, wow. You might ask, what's their secret? What, what is it that makes them able to move in such a beautiful way with all these dynamics, in balance, in tune with their surroundings, and also fit for change? What is it that really connects them? And I've made an exercise, it's a model for organization in motion, which might demonstrate some of these principles for moving in a good way. It's also an exercise for getting a group quickly into the flow. So watch the screens, that's very good. First, they have to create a common space. And the space, that invisible thing, represents the invisible things, like purpose, Values, vision, and they all come from different perspectives. Secondly, they have to agree 
on this vision. And since they do come from different perspectives, they create a multi-dimensional vision, multi-dimensional space. So this is the ideal vision. And then life begins. And all the imbalances and imperfections starts to occur. And they are to recreate that vision the best they can. Like, hey, no, if I move this this way, then the vision is okay. And then the others has to follow. And maybe one speeds up because, hey, I have to move my stick this way in order to recreate the vision. And maybe one, another one says, no, I have to go over here. And then suddenly the structure moves. And in the beginning, they're all like, hey, you're not doing your job. I'm doing mine, I think. <laughs> so they focus very much on each other and each other's sticks. But as they gradually focus more and more on the structure, that which really, really connects them, it takes on another form and another feeling. Because they concentrate. They focus towards that which connects them. And that creates a space, a real feeling of being together. And that real feeling allows them to expand, but not so much so they lose the touch with the center. That real feeling of center, no, no mental construct. And they go back again. So this becomes a breathing organism with all different parts. And imagine this was your life. And all these different parts in your life how do you move? Or your company? Or even society? How do we move? And what's the essence? What dynamics do we have? Are we able to expand? Do we expand? Are we always going very contracted, small, rigid maybe? Maybe not rigid, but just small? Are we able to accelerate? Are we able to move in space as things change around us? How do we move? Are we integrated? What's the essence of your movement? What is it that connects all parts of you, of the company, of society? Gradually, there's a feeling of flow that happens. They all, they're no longer just individuals, but because of that space feeling, that collective feeling, they are also the collective. And that energizes them. They're both individuals and a collective. They're united. They're integrated. Vision and action. Yes. Yes. I agree. So, I have to tell you, what I do every day is dancing because that gives me that energy, that feeling of aliveness and it helps me navigate throughout the day and making decisions from that sense of life, just that respect for life, that sense of life. And uh, now I'm going to show you a mini performance, it's nine minutes and uh, I think we should just have fun. And maybe you recognize the dancing style, maybe your company has a dancing style, anyway, showtime. Welcome to ladies and gentlemen, we wish you inspired and remind you of all strange movements we are surrounded by every day. Today we will show various dancing styles and then we will give you a nice dancing style, not very different from your own. We will also say something about how a specific dancing style brings the person to nothing in touch with its surroundings. Of course, everything is strictly based on prejudice and yours as well.
Without the objects in your hand, but with a lot of creative imagination and need of expression, you can do the mind dance. Invisible instruments are usually selected, which are handled with the most precise handwork in order to impress the other sex. The Arabic dance. This dance is usually seen with continuous steps on the spot and militant rhythm of the legs. The lines are straight and rigid, with strong crunching force in all directions. If Adolf Hitler was alive today, he would probably be an Arabic instructor. The shrinking dance, with a self-confident smile and a just put forward and smooth movement, the person entered the dance floor. As he sees is now 20 years older and with 30 kilos more than how the person remembered her from last night, when he was drunk and horny. With your back curve and with small neutral hand swings, the shrinking dance is perfect for sneaking out without being seen. The posing dance with incomplete, a bit unexpected movements and some quick posing moments in order to receive reaction, admiration and laughter. The posing dance is perfect for making yourself the most handsome clown of the evening. The business dance. Get in touch with someone by doing fast and short movements right in front of their face. Once you have got their attention and you have exchanged the necessary dance steps, move on to someone that may be more interesting for your personal career. The dance floor can be the place for ambitious networking. The peacock dance. With your chest outwards and elbows that waves like a peacock, you can impress a partner. This partner might reject you in the beginning, but if you run around, it's hard to ignore you. The peacock dance is related to the octopusy dance. The arms encircling the target and sucking into it. The wave-like movements can also be seen in electric boogie. The ass push dance. Looking sideways, the ass guiding you, you can move towards the one you want to be intimate with. Why being satisfied with putting your nose into someone else's business when you can put your whole ass there? The conductor dance, with the arms waving around in random patterns, as if you were a conductor, and in whatever rhythm that suits yourself, you can convince anyone that you actually can dance. It's just very advanced. The touch yourself dance, often used by Afro-Americans in pop music videos. The tip of the tongue up in your mouth makes you look like a superstar in your own universe. The boy band dance is for the flirting guys. With an overcool and sentimental attitude and a smile practiced a thousand times in front of the mirror, you try to melt anyone's heart. Bad lip sync doesn't stop you from singing your love declaration to the first and best girl who happens to be around. The drama queen dance, hands moving around face and chest in dramatic ways as if totally captured by the inner drama going on. You will be the center of attention as you drag yourself through the dance floor in slow motion with heartbreaking expressions in your face and body. In the hard rock dance, the person wants to break any pattern by going for an enormous amount of impulses. This dancing style may appear advanced but in fact it's not and can be used by anyone. It's quite energetic, as if thousand volts and 54 orgasms went through the wrong body. The spiritual dance has often the palms of the hands together as if Buddha was dancing himself. Every movement gives the impression of being a ritual of strong importance. The gun dance is known from western movies when legs are moving fast up and down in order to avoid being hit by a bullet from a gun. In today's break dance we see steps from the old tradition of gun dance. The pelvic dance, head, shoulders and back have minimal movements in order to give a maximum attention to that which actually moves. The anti-genital dance is the opposite of the pelvic dance. The genitals are being held in an appropriate distance as the upper body is leaning forward. This dancing style goes with people who have chosen to live in platonic relationships without much sexuality. In the I have to pee dance, the person is off the ground with the heels, knees together and a light tripping of feet is to prevent any bounce that will make it all leap.
if the accident may occur, keep your legs a good distance apart and put your hip up and back, waiting for it all to dry as you keep dancing. The Latino Lover Dance With a Latino lover smile and hip moving ecstatically in all directions, putting all your body parts in danger for breaking out of their joints, you can show passion and extreme sensuality. The mouth is flung around as if gasping for air, but the intention is first of all to show the handsome masculine jaws. In the square dance, the person is moving in squares. His only concern is to get the legs right, and he may be off rhythm because getting the legs right doesn't necessarily include listening to the music. The person can easily lose his mind if the square pattern is broken. People working in archives and history museums and people with economic responsibility in public organizations often dance the square dance. Ladies and gentlemen, you have now been shown a number of dancing styles and different ways of getting in touch with your surroundings. Thank you from Curie Textness. Dance first and think afterwards. <laughs>